Welcome to a new vlog. In today's video I want to share with you a new project I'm working on. As you can see there are a couple of budges on this board but it all worked out in the end and I used up pretty much all available I.O. on this ESP32 module. The idea for this project started back when I first got the uh, T962 uh, infrared reflow oven. I discovered that inside the oven there are hot spots where the temperature is higher and cold spots where the temperature is lower and I wanted to investigate this issue further. These uh, temperature gradients inside the oven could lead to trouble. You could get melted connectors in some places and cold joints in other places. And now it's hard to tell how, the bad, how bad the situation is without doing some actual measurements. So I decided to design and build uh, this board which is capable of reading 10 thermocouples and logging the data. This way I could uh, place the thermocouples inside the oven, something like on a 3x3 matrix or a 4x2x2 by two by two, and I could get a sense of what's going on inside the oven. So that was the introduction, now let's jump into the schematic design in KiCad so I can explain a few of the decisions that I made during the schematic layout phase. There were a few things clear from the start. I wanted to use the ESP32 as the controller to potentially have wireless data logging as a feature later on. I wanted data logging to micro SD card so I could easily remove the card and connect it to a computer for analyzing the data. And I also wanted a USB to serial interface for debug and uh, programming of the ESP32. This pretty much defined the general architecture of the system and all that was left to do was to choose a voltage regulator to provide 3.3 volts for the whole system. I went with the good old uh, 3.17 LDO and I also needed to find an interface chip for reading the thermocouples. I went with the MAX31855 and this meant an SPI interface and the disadvantages of needing 10 chip select pins. An interface working on I2C would have been nicer, but I already had some of the MAX31855 chips, which are not cheap, so I decided to stick with these. And I also wanted to avoid adding an additional multiplexer chip, but I managed to fit all of this with the available I.O. on the ESP32, or so I thought. Layout was pretty straightforward for this design, it was mostly done on the top layer which left me with a pretty nice continuous ground plane on the bottom layer. I sent the Gerber files to PCBWay.com which is the official provider of printed circuit boards for the Vordlog channel. I just used the standard green solder mask with any gold plating and as you can see the boards came out looking great and in no time I had one assembled and ready for testing. I used my hot plate to do the assembly. It's my preferred method uh, for doing one-off uh, board prototypes because it's the fastest way to get the job done. Here is a quick video of uh, this board reflowing. After writing some test code, I immediately discovered that thermocouple interface chips 1 and 2 were not responding and this led to some debugging and I discovered that GPIOs 34 to 39 are input only pins and you can't use these as outputs to drive anything. And there they were, GPIO 34 and 35 used for driving chips number one and number two for the thermocouple interface. And this is the stuff that one should really add to library symbols so that it's immediately visible to the guy who's drawing the schematic. And I think that going forward I'm going to uh, include this ESP32 symbol into my own library and add all of this uh, information. Now luckily I also had two LEDs on board hooked up to GPIO 22 and 23. So what I did was to bodge a couple of uh, wires and drive the chip select pins for those two chips with GPIO 22 and 23. And technically you could still drive the LEDs as they are active high and the chip select signals are active low. So you could drive the chip select low for a few milliseconds while reading the chip, then drive them back up to drive the LEDs. It wouldn't even be noticeable to the user. I also had a little bit of trouble with the ESD protection diodes that I placed on the micro SD card interface. Uh, I think they're messing with the signal integrity 
Um, I didn't spend enough time debugging this issue, but I couldn't access most of the SD cards I had, so I just removed them and then everything started working uh, reliable. In terms of firmware, the code was written in Arduino and lately I've been using Platform.io for these projects, but you can use any IDE you want. I'll just share a link in the description below to a GitHub repository where you can take a look at the source code. Also in the description there are some affiliate links. If you click those, you can help support the channel with no additional cost for you. And while we're here, I'll also mention Patreon, which is a great way of supporting the channel with as little as $1 per month. The code will basically read the thermocouple values as well as the current time and date using an NTP server and it will then log this data once a second in a text file on the SD card. I've been doing this while connected to a computer so it was easy to see debug messages if uh, there are any issues but I would probably want to add some kind of signaling uh, either via the onboard LEDs uh, or I don't know something else to show the user that the data logging is in progress and everything is okay uh, or signal when there is an error with the SD card or something like that. I won't go into too much detail with the code it's just something that I pieced together and I'm not a good software engineer. I'm sure members of my audience can do a much better job but it at least shows that the hardware is working. If I were to do a uh, second revision of this board I would probably add like a user switch as a start for the login procedure and I would probably also fix this uh, bodge in the PCB layout. Regarding the oven and analyzing the temperature gradients uh, inside the oven I will uh, have to do a uh, separate video on that topic after I collect some more data but I probably have parts left to build another one of these boards so if anyone is interested in such a board just leave a comment below and I'll add it to my Tindy store. Just note that due to the cost of the thermocouple interface chips the board will not be cheap. Uh, there are 10 of these chips that need to be installed so that's like $60 just for the uh, thermocouple interface chips. I would be curious to hear if you guys are making mistakes and budgets like the ones I just showed with this project. I'm mostly dealing with these on my hobby projects where I spend far less time reading documentation uh, but I'm curious to see how everyone else is doing it. Just drop a comment below, uh, hit that like button, the subscribe button, you know, the usual YouTube stuff that every channel asks you to do and check out the links in the description. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you on the next one.